But I believe God wants us to see something this morning because we sometimes... Yeah, let me get into this. We sometimes think that God is always in charge. And he, while that is absolutely, absolutely true, I believe God has made us representatives of Him on earth. I believe that God has established something in His children, in His people, that puts us in charge. I'm going to get into this in a minute because I'm going to dig down and we're going to go back into the book of, of Genesis. But let me just read this same scripture I just read earlier. I want to read it in the Message Bible. Here's what it says. Jesus grilled by the Pharisees on when the kingdom of God would come. Answered, the kingdom of God doesn't come by counting the days on a calendar. Nor when someone says, look here or there it is. And why? Because the kingdoms, God's kingdom, is already among you. Sometimes we sing a song called, When We All Get to Heaven. And we look to heaven as that's when we win. Can I tell you something? We already won. You see, the kingdom of God is already within you. You don't have to wait for it. It's already here. As a child of God, we have been given something that the world doesn't have. I was reminded of a song this morning when you used to sing when I was a kid. It's this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it. You see, God has put something in the kingdom of God and in his children that the world didn't give it to you, and because of that, the world can't take it away. We, try, we sometimes let the world rob us of our blessings, rob us of what God has said is already yours. That's why we sang the song this morning, it is mine, mine, blessed be his name. He has given peace, perfect peace to me. You see, I have something that the world didn't give me, and by rights, the world cannot take it away. Amen. Hey, I've been two weeks without preaching. You're in store. <laughs> just, just, just hang on to your seats. Grab the seat in front of you, because it, it could be a bump in your head this morning. But I've been given something, and you've been given something, that the world can't take away from you. You, sometimes we give it up, or sometimes we let it slide, or sometimes we let the world come in, and it, it seems like it overpowers us. But I'm here to instill something in you this morning that God has given you, the world can't take it from you. Let me just share something here. Go back to the book of Genesis, chapter 1. Verse 26. This is right before the creation of Adam and Eve. Adam, to be more specific. Genesis 1.26 says, God said, everybody say, God said. God said. He said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. And in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. You see, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And then he told, he, told, he put a specific, a specific thing in our lives as under the creation of him that he didn't give the fish he didn't give the fowl. He didn't give the beast. He said, let them have dominion. As much as I love animals, let me tell you, a dog does not have dominion over me. Or a cat, or a cow, or a deer, or whatever. God has given us dominion over them, not them over us. Now, this word demand, dominion, I want you to see this. It comes from the word in the New Testament, probably some of you have probably heard it, it's called dunamis. Dunamis, dunamis, God's power. Donnie, you probably remember that from Jackson Rose, they used to sing called dunamis. 
God's power. This is what dominion means. It's the inherent power or the power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. From the very creation of humankind, God said, I am giving you dominion or inherent power by nature over everything else. I read this and I jumped. Literally. Because God has placed in us something inherent in our DNA. The world didn't give it to you. Let me just, let me just reiterate that. The world didn't give it to you. God placed something in your DNA that gives you the right to rule. It's the inherent power that is in something by nature. It's not put on something, it's in your DNA. You don't have to ask God for the authority, He's already given you the authority. Did He not tell His disciples, Behold, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy? Amen. When he, Jesus reiterated this, to his disciples before he sent them out. He said, I, I'm telling you, this is in you from creation, but I'm going to reiterate it in your life today. I'm going to make, I'm going to make it real to you today. That's what he was telling them. He said, I am giving you the authority over all the power of the enemy. I believe that God has set something in his church that the church needs, it needs to be revealed to the church. The church needs to understand it and the church needs to walk in it. And that is you have dominion over everything else. Amen. Amen. So it's just, I can feel it. Sometimes get to a place of relinquishing our authority when God says that's unlawful. You see, when Adam and Eve fell, God had already given them dominion, right? Over everything. Adam and Eve fell and they relinquished that authority that was given to them. They, they allowed Satan to come in and deceive them. And I'm going to blame both of them. I'm not, I'm not someone who just blames Eve for everything. Adam was there too. He knew the rules. They gave up the authority that they had over the earth. But, see, God is a God of law and order. I want you to hear this. God is a God of law and order, and God will not even break his own rules. God gave mankind, through Adam and Eve, dominion over the earth, over everything on the earth. When Adam and Eve fell, that, that sin caused that separation and caused a diminish, diminishing of the dominion. God can only act within his own boundaries. And so, he had to send his son. Hear this. The Bible calls him the second Adam. You see, because God had to establish, reestablish that authority through another human. Oh. See this? That's why, now, granted, we all know Jesus had to come because he had to die on the cross. The atoning work, the blood that he shed, had to redeem us, but God acted in his own law to do it. He sent his son. The Bible calls him the second Adam. First Adam fell. The second Adam came to restore dominion to the church. Amen. 
That's why he could, he could commission the 70 when they went out and says, you have power over all the enemy. Because Jesus said, I'm reestablishing the dominion of my children here on earth. Now, sometimes, does it feel like, sometimes like you're not winning? Does it feel like sometimes that you lose that authority or you just, you know, you're just not functioning in it? Well, I'm here to tell you, God is reminding you today that you still have it. <clears throat> because the world can't take it away. As a blood-bought believer, as someone who has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, God has reestablished dominion over your life and your life over the world. Now, I, I don't always get into some, into some of the blabbing gravity teaching, but I'll tell you one thing. I believe the church needs to get a little farther into it. You can't throw the baby out of the bathwater. There have been abuses in it, of course. But I'm here to tell you that, that God wants to establish within you, within us, within the body of Christ. He wants to let you know that dominion is still yours. That's why he tells us in Scripture, Jesus says, that if any two of you agree, touching any one thing, it will be done by my Father in heaven. Why? Because God has given you dominion. Dominion. Now, sometimes it doesn't always work out the way we want it to work out, but I'm here to tell you, I know for a fact, according to, not by my experience, but according to the Word of God, that if I agree, if you agree, touching any one thing, it will be done by my Father in heaven. It's not my words, not my experience. That is the Word of the living God. He's a God who cannot lie. I tell you, I was so excited Wednesday night. We started into the book of Ecclesiastes. Excuse me, Ezekiel. Wow. <laughs> the book of Ezekiel. For those of you who weren't here, I'm telling you, you missed it. It just blessed my heart. It just blessed my gizzard. Nothing knocked my socks off, let me tell you. In chapter 1, he's talking about the wheel. Go to that. Let's go to Ezekiel. Chapter 1. <coughs> Talks about the wheel, and I don't know if you've ever gotten into, into this before, but I'm telling you something. stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up together with them. For the spirit of the living creatures <coughs> was in the wheels. I'm telling you, folks, those wheels represent three things and by different things. And I'm not going to get into it because it just, I would, we would be here until three o'clock. But those wheels, that is the spirit of the living God. And it represents his omnipresence, his omniscience, and his omnipotence. And let me tell you something. Sometimes it feels like my wheels have been kicked out from underneath of me. What did, what did Mark say? Your wheels? About your grass? Well, if you try to stand on your own two feet, you fall on your grass. You fall on your grass. <laughs> if you try to stand on your own two feet, you fall on your grass. But let me tell you something. When I stand on the wheels that he's talking about here, I stand on the all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-able-to, every place, God. Amen. We don't give God enough credit. The God that, is, that knows everything, sees everything, can be everywhere, and is all-powerful over everything, has given you that same dominion. <laughs> <laughs> but 
richest man in the world right now is Elon Musk. If Elon Musk tells you that everything he has is yours, how many of you would drain his bank account? <laughs> Hello, he's worth, I don't know, hundred and some billion or a trillion, I don't know what he's worth now. He loses money, gains money, doesn't matter really, it's all going to fade away. But if he told you, here's my bank account, here's my checkbook, here's the authorization to go to my bank and take whatever you want or need, how many of you would go in there and say, I'd like a Coke? <laughs> Seriously, how many of us would go in and say, Give me a Happy Meal from McDonald's. None of us would. We would take every, if we were given the authorization for it, we would take everything we needed and or wanted. Would we not? I know, I know you people. <laughs> let me tell you something. We may not think we're greedy, and I wouldn't think most of you are, but let me tell you something. If you had that at your disposal, you'd take everything you wanted and needed. If you're smart, you would. Okay? It's the same thing with God. Now, God's bank account cannot be depleted. Let me just tell you that. But if God says everything I have is already yours, what stops us from accessing it? What stops us from saying, you know what? God, I need something. God, this is, this is something I need in my life. I need it. You can provide it. There it is. He says, don't, he said in Luke 17, he says, don't go looking around for it. He said, the kingdom of God is already within you. I like coming to church. I believe it's good to come to church. It's scriptural to come to church. But let me tell you something. Whether I'm in church, whether I'm in my car, whether I'm sleeping in bed, I'm telling you something, the kingdom of God is within me and he's wherever I take him. Amen. God isn't just God when we come to church. Now I believe that there is a corporate power that comes. That's why two or three agree touching any one thing. That's why, that's why we, we have that. That's scriptural. But let me tell you friends, whether you're here or at home or in your car or wherever you may be, David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're still there. That's what David said. No matter where you are, the kingdom is already within you. I tell you, if I, if I had a rightful heritage to the monarchy in Britain, I'd take advantage. Anyone ever see the, uh, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and how many children they have that are on their payroll? Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren get money from the kingdom of Saud just because of their blood lineage. <clears throat> Can we connect that? Our blood lineage comes from Jesus. We've had a blood transfusion in the kingdom of God. So we now have access to the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Not just access, but authority and dominion. Kids saw me used to say, Joy is the flag flowing high from the castle of my heart. From the castle. You guys don't know that. Did you know this? Okay. From the castle of my heart. From the castle of my heart, joy is the flag flowing high from the castle of my heart, for the king is in residence there. Ha! I mean, you got the flag flying. So the king is in residence. The kingdom, the king is in residence. All this stuff. Let me tell you, a few weeks ago, you didn't want to be around me, okay? I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a bad 
patient. Let me just say that. <laughs> when I when I don't feel well, just stay away because I'm just God, who knows what I'm going to do and or say. When you're running a fever and you're just, I'm telling you, I, I'm not giving glory to COVID, and I've never had it until just a few weeks ago. But let me tell you something. When when every it seems like every joint in your body starts to ache, my toes ached. <laughs> Hello, when your toes ache, you're a not a hat and camp. But thank you, Jesus. I have dominion over those things. COVID isn't the last word. COVID doesn't have the last say. Nor does cancer, nor does heart problems, or whatever else you're facing. They don't have the last word of a child of God because you have dominion. Now, am I saying it always works out? up in Pittsburgh the other day at the hospital, walked in to see a man. His first words out of his mouth was, it's not over. About five hours later, the man met Jesus. It's still not over. It's still not over. It doesn't matter whether he's here or there. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present from with the Lord. Well, glory, hallelujah, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Hello. Wasn't defeated by sickness. You and I aren't defeated by sickness, by whatever name we put on it, because the name of Jesus is above every other name. At the name of Jesus, every knee bows, every tongue. That he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, that's the kind of dominion the church should walk in. Yes. That it doesn't matter what name we put on it. I have dominion because of what God has inherently put in my nature, put in my DNA. I have dominion over these things according to the Word of God. <clears throat> Does it always work out the way I want it to? You know what? It always works out the way God says. Amen. Always. Come hell or high water, it always works out the way God says. Oh, this is good. Hey, I still got another hour. <laughs> Look at 1 Corinthians. I've got some scriptures for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. Listen to this. He says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Look at that. The word of God is ever living. Jesus is that living word. But let me tell you something. God doesn't just stop by saying that his word, that's, that's it. But his word is demonstrated in his power over your life, or his dominion over the world. You see, the Word of God does not just sit back and bite tails <clears throat> hoping that a good turnout happens. God is not sitting up on his throne wondering whether or not things are going to turn out for the good. Because according to my scripture, your scripture, the living Word of God, that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are the called according to His purpose. That's what the Word says. So the Word is not just, the power of the kingdom is not just in a word, but it is demonstrated in power. I hope, I hope you're getting the revelation today. Listen to this. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 28. He says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Look at this. 
we are receiving a kingdom which cannot, cannot, cannot be shaken. Don't you worry about the kingdom of God. Don't you worry about it failing because it cannot be shaken. However, whatever you may think at the moment, let me just tell you, go back to the word because the word says that the kingdom of God can't be moved. Whatever the news says, keep reminding yourself the kingdom of God cannot be moved. It can't be shaken. It cannot be knocked off its dominion can't happen. He said, since we're receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace. I've told you about grace many times. Let me remind you something. Grace is not just a merit of favor. Grace is the supernatural ability to do what I can't do in my own power. In other words, grace is the dominion that you have over the world because God has put it in your DNA. <coughs> so since we have a kingdom that cannot be saved, he says serve God with grace. In other words, serve God with that ability that's already been put in you. Don't just sit back. I, I've done it before, and you probably have too. Sometimes we sit back and we let the devil beat us up. Probably many of us think that's happened to me. I know it's happened to me. Sometimes I sit back and let the devil do what he wants to do. You ever feel like the devil is rampant over your life, or over a portion of your life, or over things in your life? You ever feel like he's running? ransacked over, over your family or over your business or over something. Let me tell you something. Sometimes we let the devil do it. He does not have dominion over us. We let him do what he, do what he does sometimes. It doesn't mean he has the dominion over us. Or sometimes we let him walk over us. I'm here to tell you, friends, that he said, let us serve God with the supernatural ability to do what you can't do on your own. Why, when we pray, if you have a doubt, stop praying. Just tell you, if you don't believe God can do what you're praying for, don't waste your breath. But if you believe it, <clears throat> say it loud. If you believe according to the word of God, what he says about a situation, which by the way, his word is his will, so don't come asking me what is the will of God. If Find it in the word, because it's there. If it's the will of God, you say it loudly and proudly. Got enough people out in the world today that are saying, that are proud and saying it. Let me tell you, I'm proud to be in the kingdom. I'm proud to be a child of God. And I don't care what else, what else happens. I don't care what anybody around me says. I am proud to be in the kingdom of God, and I'm going to tell you that. I walk you in the dominion that God has already placed. And God has reestablished it through his son Jesus Christ into you. Your life. I'm telling you, friend, I remember when I was in high school, we had a group of believers. We had a group called the Fellowship of Christian Students. And I remember walking out because every three times a week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we would meet before school to pray. And I remember we would walk out from that auditorium. And some of, some of us would look at each other and say, do you feel the power? I remember, I remember some people doing it. Do you feel it? Do you, and we would like, you know, like, you know, feel the spark. Do you feel the power? Because I believe there's power in prayer for us. And I remember one morning we were leaving praying. And just as we were walking down one of the halls, there was a uh, couple, couple of students that were in a fight. And the one boy who was 
flip back as he was hit, flip back, hit a walker, busted his cheek, and blood was just gushing out. Gross, by the way. And here he lay on the floor, and I go back in his head with blood just, ew. And I remember some of us walking up to him, kneeling down, putting our hands on him and praying for him. And let me tell you, friends, the bleeding stopped, his eyes came back into focus, and he stood up as though he had never been hurt. Do we have that kind of excitement in the church today? Because we have dominion over these things? Do we have that same uh, excitement, knowing that when we gather as believers, that I know God's going to meet me there? I know that when we pray, God's going to do something. Do we have that same kind of excitement? I was glad when you said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Why? Because I know that when I join up with other believers' faith, and we join together, and we declare the kingdom of God and His dominion over things, things will happen. Not might, not could, but will. We come... We come to church expecting God to do nothing. Just, just. So many people around the nation this morning are attending Sunday morning services, coming to church expecting just to sing a song and to hear a good, happy message. But not expecting to meet God there. Not expecting God to do something. My goodness, some churches, if God would start to do something, they'd freak out. I'm not, not all, I'm just, and I'm, not pick, I'm just saying, the majority of Christians come to church expecting God to do nothing. I'm going to come to church, I'm going to go through the routine, and I'm going to go home and go about my day when I leave. That's, that's the mentality of most people on a Sunday morning. The pastor used to say years ago, he used to say that people come on Sunday mornings come because they like to be seen. People who come on Sunday nights come because they love the pastor. People who come, and please, I'm not saying this, if any of those who come on, on Wednesday night come because they love God. But do you see the majority of people who come on Sunday mornings come because they want to be seen, they want to fulfill their duty, and they don't expect God to do anything. Well, let me tell you, friends, I came today believing and expecting God to do something in every person's life. Why? Because the kingdom of God is within me. And the kingdom of God is within you. I came expecting that. He put his flag up in my life and in your life. So God can't help but when two or three, or four, or ten, or fifty, or a hundred, however many it may be, gather and believe on his name. Things will happen. Why? Because the kingdom is within you. God has placed that dominion in your DNA. All you have to do is walk in it. It's not like it's not there. It's there. All you have to do is walk in it. Walk in that obedience that he has given us. I'm going to go on this morning, but I'm, I'm, I'm not. Because I believe that, that we as a church, if we don't walk in that dominion, then it gives God a black eye sometimes. It sometimes it gives the devil glory over what God should already have. Sometimes, we, sometimes that happens. When we don't walk in our dominion, I believe it gives God a black eye and gives the devil a black eye. Because things, <clears throat> things that should already be accomplished, things that should already be happening, aren't because we're not walking in the dominion God has, God has given us. The Word says, sometimes we may not see it, but listen, the Word says to call those things that are not as though they were. You see, you're taking dominion over those things, even if you can't see it. Which 
show, I like what you shared this morning about if God can create everything out of nothing and make the creation. And then we look at us being a new creation. Hello. You've been given that right of creation. He says you've been created anew. And in that newness, he says, I've given you that dominion. Why can't we walk in? Did he not give the sun dominion over the, over the day and the moon by night? Is that not what the word says? He gave the sun the rule, the dominion over the day and the moon by night. Well, hello, as a believer, as a child of God, as someone who has it's been put in your DNA, God has given you dominion over every fish, every fowl, every beast, every evil thing, anything. Hello? What would happen if the sun chose, you know, I don't believe it's possible, but what would happen if the, the, the sun chose not to walk in its rule over the day? Can I tell you that the sun always shines? It's just your perspective. Even at midnight, the sun's still shining. It's just half the world is blocking it from you. It's the same with a believer. The sun's still shining, even in the darkness. Even when we don't see it. Even when we don't know what's going on. And it seems like the darkest of nights. Let me tell you something. The sun, the S-O-N, is still shining and still rains. Even though you don't see it, you still have to be. Even if you don't feel like it. That's why we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, that's what Scripture says. Because sometimes when you don't feel like it, you still bring it. Sometimes you don't feel like you have authority over things, you don't have dominion over things. Walk in it. Walk in it. Just bow your heads for a moment. Just bow your heads. Father, I just thank you that you've already given us dominion. That the kingdom of God is already within us as believers. Father, I know that sometimes we don't feel like it. And I know sometimes it seems like we're losing the battle. Sometimes it feels like it's dark. But God, I thank you that you've still given us dominion. That dominion is still there. That sun is still shining. All we have to do is begin to speak it, declare it, and walk in it. Because it's there. It's already in us. Father, I just pray today that faith would arise in, within all of us. That faith would arise. And that, God, we would begin to declare your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. And that regardless of the outcome, God, we still walk in the dominion you've given us. We still walk as ones who have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. God, we, I declare today in the hearing of every person today that it is not by might, it is not by power, but it is by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. It is by his spirit we have to be. So, Father, I just thank you and I just pray today we would receive it, we would walk in it, we would believe it, and we would speak it today as though it's already happened. So, God, I thank you. Stir it up within us. Stir up this kingdom within us so that we would walk in the dominion that you have rightfully given us in our DNA. So we bless you this morning. Thank you. Praise you. For, for you are worthy of receiving all power and glory and honor and dominion. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen.
Thank you.